I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I work on and particularly would like to acknowledge their ongoing practice of their cultural traditions. Just to give you a little bit of a background to the Story in a Box project, it was actually started as an engagement project at the University of Melbourne when I was completing my PhD. Operated for four years and then at the onset of the pandemic, the funding that I had to continue the work was withdrawn. So I was really keen to keep going, the schools, particularly in the Golden Valley that I've been working with. So I decided to set up a, a not-for-profit organisation, the Hands on Humanities Project, with the intention of delivering classes to schools that could afford the classes and using the money from those classes to deliver the same classes to schools that couldn't afford to pay. I'm an Egyptologist and so the way in for me with the students that I work with is because ancient civilizations are studied in year seven. It allows me to use the Egyptology aspect to introduce students to an object-based learning program that allows us to facilitate other sorts of discussions. So what I want to do here is I want to share some of the voices that we have generated, the stories that have come out of our project. The start of this was actually, it was very much just a teaching and learning tool and all object inspired discovery nurtures observation analysis and interpretation skills, but we wanted to build on that. So through applying the theory of discriminative perceptual learning, the association of sound with objects, we decided to make this tomb in a box. And I would just like you to listen to this voice, which is representing an Australian archeologist in the earlier 20th century. We've realized it's quite problematic, but let's just listen for a start. It is no surprise to find an Anubis statue in the tomb. He was the god of embalming and mummification. Anubis helped to mummify Osiris after he was killed by Seth. He also acted as a guide and protector of the dead in their journey to the afterlife. Anubis has the head which looks like a jackal, a dog-like creature. Statues of him can be in the form of an entire jackal or a jackal head on a human body. Whether he is in full animal form or with a human body, he still wears a long tail, which is a club-like shape at the bottom. The jackal was an animal that was often seen digging around at graveyards, so it is no wonder that the jackal god came to be seen as the protector of tombs and mummies. During mummification rituals, priests wore Anubis masks. He looks a lot like Seth, but you can tell the difference by looking at the ears. Anubis has pointy ears, while Seth has ears which are square across the top. So you can see that we use the objects and the voices to explain the, the concepts that we were trying to get them to grasp a little more. That became a model for um, the students creating their own boxes. We're now using the term in a box to promote discussions about decolonisation, um, which is very interesting. Over the course of the period since 2016, I'll just mention that we've now probably worked with about 2,000 students in Australia and in Arab world countries. It's a growing number and we're hopeful that will continue to grow. We set very clear fundamentals for development of new boxes. We told the students that it had to be able to tell a story of their place and cultural traditions to their peers in another country that would have no idea. They also get to choose the decorations for the boxes, the outside decoration, the inside decorative elements, and then create 100 word recordings. So quite brief recordings that are then translated into the language of the country of reception. So this is just an example of some of the things that the Golden Valley students chose to put in their box. Not all of them, 
but great diversity. So let's just listen to one of these ones. We live in the Golden Valley in Northern Victoria, Australia. Aboriginal people from this area are part of the Yorta Yorta tribe. Our tribe totem is the long neck turtle. Our dream time stories come from the long neck turtles. This is what our tribe connects with. Yorta Yorta is one of 300 tribes in Australia, all having different animal symbols. We have lots of long neck turtles in our river systems here. We have three large rivers that connect in our area. There are the Broken, Goulburn and Seven Creeks. The turtles have a long neck and dark green to brown colour. So very different voices for each object. I could, you know, the, the football one is one of my faves. Very fortunately, we managed to secure some funding from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Council of Australian Arab Relations, for delivery of the Golden Valley in a box to a group of Arab world countries. One of the uh, specific requirements of the grant monies was that we um, delivered our program at the Australian Pavilion at Expo 2020 Dubai, that of course happened in 2022. So this is a very, very brief overview video that was made at the Expo. students who we saw in Dubai from GEMS Modern Academy. Now, interestingly, we had always framed this project to be working with year seven and eight students. With the students in Dubai from the GEMS Modern Academy, we worked with year three students and year 11 students. And the program worked just as effectively for both of them. The year 11 students from GEMS then created their set of objects. And again, you can see great diversity. A treasure of traditional Indian clothing is the bangles that make a distinct sound while worn by most women in India. Bangles are rigid bracelets which are usually made of metal, wood, glass or plastic. For Indian women, bangles are not just mere ornaments. Traditionally, they are more often than not a part of their identity. Different colored bangles traditionally signify different things. It is a tradition to wear bangles after marriage, symbolizing health, luck and prosperity. Red signifies energy and prosperity, while green denotes good luck and fertility. Yellow bangles are meant for happiness, white is for new beginnings, and orange is for success. Silver bangles denote strength, and gold bangles are the ultimate symbol of fortune and prosperity. Bangles have a rich history and are definitely one of the most notable parts of Indian culture. The oud is a pear-shaped, stringed musical instrument commonly used in the Middle Eastern and North African music. It can easily be recognised by its lack of frets, as well as its smaller neck. Ouds first appeared in ancient Egypt, and while Egyptian ouds belong to its clan of Arabian ouds, it is drastically different from Iraqi and Syrian ouds. Unlike Syrian ouds or Iraqi ouds, Egyptian ouds have a tone slightly different and have a pear-shaped body. Besides that, unlike its counterparts, Egyptian ords are usually heavily decorated. The Golden Valley in a Box after Dubai went on to Cairo to um, a foundation school, Tawasol, which my colleague in Cairo describes as being located in an area that would traditionally be described as a slum. The children that attend a Tawasol school don't get much in terms of education at all. So what they are able to do at Tower Soul is quite extraordinary. Heather worked with 
the students there and they came up with some really interesting things by wandering around the streets. The ancient world objects are sort of an obvious inclusion. The other ones were very important to them in terms of what they thought they saw in, in their daily lives. And the beautiful clay models were made by a local craftsman for inclusion in the box. So what's happened now is that the Cairo in a box and the Dubai slash India in a box um, has gone to the Golden Valley. Um, I'm also going to be taking it to another school in Northern Victoria next week. The question really is, I think, for us, um, because what we're trying to promote is intercultural empathy. And it really um, resonated with me, Grace, when you talked about fallout from misunderstandings, because that's really the thing that we're like, wanting to address. With a lot of the young people that we work with, I feel as though um, there's a lot of fear about uh, cultural traditional practice. And it's really only because of a lack of understanding. So all we're trying to do is promote an understanding and, and try and cut through those misunderstandings. And I really feel as though if we can do that, then all we're doing is really opening a dialogue between young people with a view to them growing their understanding of differences. Thank you to Stephanie for sending me this article, which I really, really enjoyed reading. And it made me think about a number of things. I've been talking at one of the community leaders at the Carlton Community Estate, the housing estate in Carlton. He's from Horn of Africa Communities. And he talked to me about the um, tension that exists now between the older generation and the younger generation of their families. And the intergenerational misunderstanding is causing some real problems. It struck me that if we could have older generation and younger generation members of the same families and the same communities in terms of cultural traditions speak to each other through objects that it might potentially open conversations that wouldn't normally occur. In terms of plans for new boxes, currently we're creating a symposium 2022 in a box which follows on from our recent symposium that was held at the University of Melbourne. At the end of next week, I'm going up to a small town in Northern Victoria where in fact I grew up um, to spend two days with uh, all of the secondary school students up there, only year seven through 10, 45 students in total. We have education partner agreements in place next year uh, with schools in or museums in Iraq, Morocco and Sudan, whether or not we get to go there will be dependent on ongoing funding from CAR, which may or may not happen. Why I wanted to deliver this um, presentation today was to try and promote discussion about what sort of additional layers we could add to the multi-sensory experience that we're already providing. We've proven that we have application across the school age spectrum because of the groups that we've worked with. I feel like we could extend that to other age groups older people and as I've said maybe use the work that we do with objects as a mediator for intergenerational conversation. Thank you everyone.